there's hope. Because as long as they're drawing breath and God is on the throne, something can happen. Um, as I started out saying here, I believe the church needs a reformation. But when you begin to look around and you look at uh, some of the, the things that goes on churches, we got the mega churches and we got all the entertainment and we got all this stuff going on in them and we got preachers who are preaching tickle your ear stuff and we got preachers who are preaching prosperity and we got all these kind of things going and you begin to wonder uh, how can the church have a reformation? Do you honestly believe uh, that a church like that is going to listen to something that some people like us have to say? Uh, to what we believe that the word says and what we believe that God is saying? Do you honestly believe that you can go into a place like that and make a difference or talk to people like that and make a difference? And I'm going to be real honest with you. I don't believe I can, but I know God can. Mm -hmm. Amen. And here's the thing. We can't give up hope and we can't quit. Um, I'm saying a lot of uh, things that we've all talked about before. I believe we're very close to the end. I believe we don't have a lot of time left. And I believe that now is the time to really get serious and to really get busy and to get those that we're going to get before it's eternally too late. And I do believe that the scripture uh, that we've talked about here often that in the last days God said he will pour out his spirit on his sons and on his daughters. I believe we're nearing that time. Uh, but we have to have uh, people who are ready to receive that. Uh, people who are ready to take that in. And you know what that scripture says? Uh, that I'll pour out my spirit on my sons and daughters. And uh, it talks about prophesying. And that's why I want to talk about it a little bit. But I want to make this real clear, and I think everybody here knows that a lot of times when you hear the word prophecy, you think of telling the future. But most of the time when you read the Bible, when you look at the word prophecy, if you look at the original language, it means speaking the word of God mm -hmm. is what it means. And when in that scripture, he said, when he pours out his spirit on his sons and his daughters, and they will prophesy, it means they will speak the word of God. And... We're going to go into Ezekiel chapter 37. This is very well-known scripture. It's about the Valley of Dry Bones. And as we look around and we look at the church world, I believe it's a Valley of Dry Bones. I believe it's dead. It's spiritually dead. It's dried up. And you know, as I said, when you begin to look at what they're doing and what they're going through and, and you look at yourself and you think, there's no way in this world they're ever going to listen to anything I have to say. There's nothing that I can do that's going to change anything. And that's true within ourselves. But we're going to take a look at here at the man of God and what God had him do uh, in this valley of dry bones. But I want to look at it as this valley of dry bones being those who thought that we think are so far gone and they're so spiritually dead that you can't reach them. Uh, or the church world is so spiritually dead that you can't reach them. Uh, but we have to remember that with God. Nothing is impossible. And I'm going to tell you something else that I truly believe, and I can't give you chapter and verse for this. But if it were impossible to win anymore, wouldn't God just wrap this whole thing up? Mm -hmm. That's, right. That's right. Why would we still be here? Why would he not have taken the church out if we weren't going to be able to make a difference anymore? If that was it and we were done and, and we fulfilled our purpose and we can't get anybody else and we can't change anything else, why are we still here? I, I put a little thing on uh, the internet here, I don't know if it was last week or the week before. Here's a test to see if uh, your mission that God has given you is over with. Are you still alive? then your mission's not over. The job you have is not over. You are not done. And there's nowhere in the book where it says you can quit. There is no retirement. We work till we go home. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. It says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were dry, very dry. Listen, I believe uh, that in my spirit, 
uh, as this prophet said, that God carried him out in the spirit. I believe God has spoken to my spirit that the church needs an awakening, that the church needs a reformation. I believe that God has allowed me to see that the church is dead. The church is dried up, just like he saw the bones in this valley. They were very dry. He said it was a bunch of bones, but he made a point of saying they were very dry. I believe the church, especially in this country, is very dead. I believe it's very dry. And it's just a, a, a wasteland of people uh, that have lost all spiritual um, connection with God and lost all spiritual sense of, of relationship with God. They're, they're calling themselves church and they're going through certain ceremonies and rituals and doing certain things that gather together on Sunday and therefore they think they're okay. But they're dried up. They are dead. Just like this prophet uh, that God took him in the spirit and allowed him to see this. And I'm probably not the only one because I've heard other people talk and I've talked to other people. If you open your eyes and you begin to look with spiritual eyes, you can see this picture. It is a valley of dry bones. It is a valley of death. It is a, a bunch of uh, things that call themselves church and people that call themselves Christians that are dead. And in the spiritual, you can see that and you can understand that. And you can see how far gone they are. I'm telling you, they are way out there. There are some of them that are so far gone that you can barely <coughs> see them anymore. They're that far gone. But listen. The, the, God took the prophet to this valley of dry bones and allowed him to see them bones. And he said they were very dry bones. And then he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And I believe that he's asking us today, do you believe uh, that you can make a difference? Do you believe that these people that you're trying to reach, that you can still reach them? Do you believe that your church uh, can be changed? Do you believe uh, that a difference can be made and I do believe that that if we are because if it wasn't true I don't believe God would have burned it on my heart the way that he's burned it on my heart I don't believe that there would be the burden that, are, that there is for the church and I believe that God is answering the question uh, do we really believe or are we just talk you know, we gather together and we talk about all the problems there are out there. What's wrong with the church? What's going on in the church? What shouldn't be happening in the church? We talk about all those kind of things. Uh, but is that all we're ever going to do is just talk about it? Or are we going to uh, believe God and trust God and make a difference for God? I'm telling you something, that if a group of people who are endowed with the Spirit of God would get a hold of what God wants them to get a hold of, you could go out there and turn the world upside down and you may sit there and you may think uh, why would that be us look at who we are and what we are and all this kind of stuff it would be you because you would be obedient to God and that's all that God is for somebody who's willing to be obedient somebody that's willing to be a vessel that can be you you look at and you go back to when Christ came why did he pick a bunch of fishermen and a tax collector and people like that uh, why would he pick somebody like that because they were usable that's what he needs. That's what he wants. And listen, you may not believe me, and you may believe me to a degree, and you may sit there and nod and say amen, but I want you to really believe this, that if we get a hold of this, and we allow God to use us, and we get filled with the Spirit of God, we can do what they did. And we all have said that, and we all say we believe that, but we have yet to do it. Is that he took him in the spirit and he showed him uh, that valley. I'm going to call it the valley of death because of the valley of dry bones. And I believe they have shown me and I believe that he has shown others the valley of death that we have to deal with. The church that is dead. I uh, think that they're okay. The church that has walked away from God, turned their back on God. People have been deceived. Uh, you can throw a lot of people in there, but it is a dead church. There's no spiritual life in them. And God has shown them. And God has answered the question, can they live again? Can they be brought back? He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. We know that God knows. And that's what this prophet said. And listen, if we know that God knows, do you think God would send you on a fool's errand? Why would God keep sending messages uh, about the church needing something and about using us and us getting equipped and us getting ready to give that thing to the church if God wasn't going to do something? 
And he goes on here. And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's what he's saying to us. Speak the word of God to them. I'm going to tell you what the church has done for a very long time. And you may not have done this. You may have done that. The church for a very long time has gone around telling people what they need to quit doing. That's right. That don't work. There's no power in that. The power is in the word. The life is in the word. We can only give them the word. That's the only thing that will make a difference. But we want to go out there and we got to tell them, you got to quit doing this, you got to quit doing that, you got to quit. They can quit it all and still die and go to hell. They need the word. It's only the word that will give them life. It is only the word that will deliver them. And for so very long, what we have done is we've tried to go out there and make church members instead of trying to introduce people to Christ. Our job is to introduce them to Christ. He will do everything else. He will make them quit what he wants them to quit. He will make them change what he wants them to change. He will cause them to give up things he wants them to give up. That is not our job. Our job is to speak the word of God and nothing but the word of God and not my opinion and not what you are to quit doing and not what you are to start doing. And you can do everything I tell you to do and still die and go to hell. We need to give them the word. Listen, what God told the prophet here. He, he saw that valley of dry bones, all of them dry bones, and they were dead. He said, can they live? And what did God tell him to do? He said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, oh, you dry bones, hear my opinion. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hear what my church believes. Hear what uh, the guy at seminary taught. No, hear the word of the Lord. It is only the word of the Lord that will make a difference. You know what's wrong with these churches? A lot of them, they're not getting the word of the Lord. They're getting the word of Brother Hoosie wants it up here. Or the word that came from the seminary or the Bible school or somewhere else. They're not getting the word of the Lord. By the word of God. And you all know this. It's the most powerful force and that we have access to. But we're not giving them a just strictly the pure word of God. Listen, you don't got to go out and try to convince anybody of anything. You don't got to argue with them. Uh, you don't got to tell them what you think. You just give them the word of God and then they got to deal with God. If they don't like it, they can take it up with God. If they want to argue, they can argue with God. If they disagree, they can disagree with God. All my arguments and all my opinions and, and my way of doing things ain't going to do what needs to be done. He told the man of God, he said, speak the word of God to these dry bones. Speak the word of God over that that is dead. And that's exactly what we need to do. We will tell people, you need to go to church. You can go to church 24-7 as long as you're drawing breath and dying, go to hell. Mm -hmm. We need to give them the word of God. We need to go back and look at what Christ told those who were in need. What did he tell Nicodemus? You must be born again. And so one way to receive eternal life. Nicodemus asked him, how does I receive eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born again. That's the message that they need. That's what they need to know. If we get them to Christ, Christ will do everything else that needs to be done. We don't have to do that. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to get them to Christ. He said to him, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And again, I'm going to say this before I move on. The word is life. The life is in the word. If something is dead, the only way to give it life is the source of life. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Listen, God told the man of God to speak the word of God to the dead bone, uh, to that valley of death. He told him to speak the word of God. Then who gave him the words to speak? God himself did. Again, he didn't tell me, go out there and give them my opinion. Go out there and give them what I taught, how you go out and soul win, uh, or whatever it is. 
says, and we've talked about this before, you just need to go out there uh, and be willing to be used and open your mouth and let God fill it. And I know I've said this here before, but I'm going to say it again because God's put it on my mind. You know, some, with some people, God may have already been working on them, and the only thing you need to say is Jesus loves you. That's right. That's right. And somebody else, you might need to explain the plan of salvation. You, you don't know where they're at. That's why you just got to open your mouth and let God fill it. Let God speak through you. Let God tell you what to say. And he will tell you what to say. If you go out there ready to be used and ready to speak the word of God. But we memorize things and, and we're going to give them the Romans road. And we're going to give them John 3.16. And, and I'm going to tell you, almost everybody you're going to talk to has already heard that. Over and over and over and over, and they're still not where they are to be. They need to hear a direct message from God. God knows what will prick their heart. God knows what will push their buttons. God knows exactly the words that will reach that person. And like I said, whether it be uh, they're at a point where God has them now, that all they need to hear is Jesus loves you, or maybe they're at a point where they just need to hear the plan of salvation, or whatever it is. But you've got to speak what it is that God wants them to hear. That's what the man of God did. And God didn't just tell him, Listen, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them. He gave them exactly what to say. He didn't say unto me, uh, prophesy unto these bones and tell them what you learned in Bible school. He didn't tell them. He told them exactly what to say. And we have to be at that position where we can hear the voice of God so that we can convey the word of God and give them what it is that they need that will reach them. If you go out there and you, start, uh, if you just go out there and you start cutting people down for what they are doing, you're going to turn them off like that and, and they ain't going to hear that. nothing you say after that. That's right. That's right. It doesn't work. It's got to be directed by God. It's got to be the Word of God. And when the man of God uh, spoke that exactly what God told him to say, listen, God told him what to say and he says this, so I prophesied or spoke the Word of God as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I behold, lo, the sinews of flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Listen, when you begin to speak exactly what God tells you to speak, then God begins to work. God begins to do something on the inside, something you can't do, something I can't do, something no human being can do. As he began to speak the word of God, something started to happen. The bones started to come together. A sin who started to become on them. Flesh started to become on them. God was doing a work. And, and, took the word of God to begin the work and to set the work in motion. When we begin to speak the word of God, God begins to do something on the inside. He begins to make a difference. He begins to make some changes. Listen, as he began to speak the word of God, something started happening. When we speak the word of God, whether you realize it or whether you don't, something will happen. How do I know that? Because God said, my word will not go out and return void. It will accomplish that, that I intended for it to accomplish. So you can have confidence that when you speak what God tells you to speak, something's happening. That's right. That's what happened when the man of God spoke the word of God. Something began to happen. A change began to take place. And it tells you about this change where the bones came together, bone to bone, and sinews of flesh came upon them, and skin covered them. A change was taking place. He began to see a change taking place. But listen, he goes on. There's more. And, and when I beheld, one of the sinews of flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Something was happening, but they weren't there yet. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. What is the wind in the Bible? The Holy Ghost is all the wind. Uh, in the upper room, there was a mighty rushing wind, and the Spirit of God came in and filled the place. It says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Speak the word of God and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and 
stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Listen, when we speak the word of God, something begins to happen. God begins to do a work. And that work begins to happen. And changes begin to take forth. But it takes the Holy Spirit of God to give them that life. It takes the Spirit of God coming in in order to regenerate them. And to make them that new creation. And to bring them back up. And I talked about this when we talked about the Holy Ghost. And you can agree or disagree or whatever you want to do with me. We need to be 